right now. Once you hear that little beep, it is on. So it is on right now. Okay? Okay. Now. Are you going to edit that part out? No. One thing I will warn you about, for me to speak loudly enough for you all to hear me from way over here, the microphone is right here and it's not particularly sensitive. So the audio is pretty darn loud on uh, if you watch the YouTube video, so you will want to turn it down. Okay, not off, because you probably want to hear what I have to say about math, but you might not, so you might want to turn it off. Um, if you are a big fan of the YouTube automatic closed captioning, which I think is funny because it doesn't work very well, I sometimes watch videos on YouTube with the closed captioning on just to see what they think that is being said. But not always. What is that? You know uh, the little at the bottom where you read? Yeah. yeah. For hearing impaired people. Yeah. We don't like to say deaf people. Because oh. for some strange reason they don't know that they're deaf. So when you say that it's deaf, that apparently hurts feelings. It's kind of like saying that a person who is visually impaired is blind. They don't like that. I don't know why. Although if you talk to visually impaired people, they're like, I don't care. That's the stupidest thing in the world. Why are you worried about it? I had numerous blind friends. I actually had a friend who was legally blind in both eyes, but he played rugby with us, and he played on the wing. So whenever he was the blind wing, we were always like, hey, we got a real-life blind winger. But that was 1990, so things were different then when you could actually say stuff like that because you're not allowed to anymore because, again, you might hurt someone's feelings, right? You know, you can't call me short because I'm, it might hurt my feelings. I'm vertically uh, impaired. But I'm okay with that. You can call me short. You can also call me fat. I'm okay with it, too. All right, so let's move on. So this is where that two negatives make a positive fallacy has come into play for you people that you all insist on, okay? It's from multiplying. Now, normally I would take a whole period today to explain why this works, but it's summer school, so I'm going to cut to the end, all right? Very simple. Negative times a negative is positive. Positive times a positive is positive. So, when multiplying, same signs equals a positive answer. Always. So here's the thing about it. Now obviously different signs are negative. A negative answer. Now, the reason I do this is because you guys, math students in general, get all antsy when you see a negative symbol. It messes with your heads. You're like, oh, I don't know what to do. Forget about it. Do the math and then go back and check in the original question. Were they both the same? Okay, the answer is positive. Were they different? Okay, the answer is negative. But otherwise, you don't change anything. Got it? Positive. Okay. Let's go along. I got two multiplying fractions here. One is written the way that we like to write it in real math classes. Right? What math is happening right there? Multiply. Okay? Now, you guys, being in, especially coming straight from grade 8, you might be used to seeing a multiplying sign there. You will not see those anymore. Almost never. From now on, if numbers bump into each other, it's multiplying. Okay? Always. I just put that time symbol there to remind you of what is going on. Cool? cool. All right. Now, Aiden. When you're multiplying them, they still have the same denominators? I'm getting to that right now. Okay? Um... When you were learning fractions in grade 4 and grade 5, when you were first introduced to them, Mrs. Bad Crumble, your teacher, said, Okay, class, we're going to add fractions. And here's how you do it. 
And she probably did a little bit about with slices of pizza and kind of like what I did where you slid the paste, the pictures together, half and a half equals a whole, all that stuff. Hopefully, if she was a good math teacher, she did that. Unless you had a guy grade four or five teacher, which you might have. Hopefully, he did that. If he didn't, he or she definitely showed you common denominators. And it took forever. They took forever working on common denominators, didn't they? You guys aren't too far removed from grade four and five. You should remember that. They spent forever working on it. And some of you still can't add fractions properly. Here's what happens. After they spend forever on adding and subtracting, they get to multiplying and they say, okay, this one's really easy. All you do is multiply straight across. You guys remember this? And they went to all the trouble, they wrote it up on the board, and they said two-thirds times three-quarters, that's a bad one, two-thirds times three-halves, uh, no, that's a bad one, two-thirds two times one-fifth. And they said, and then when you get to multiply, it's so easy because you just go straight across. Two times one is two, three times five is 15. And you were like, thank you, Mrs. Bad Crumble. I didn't want to find common denominators. You don't need to. But here's the problem. Mrs. Bad Crumble stopped here with little tiny numbers. How many numbers are there? infinite numbers. So stopping at little tiny numbers like this, is that useful? Yeah. Not really. <laughs> but that's where we stopped in elementary school. So we're going to fix that today. All right? So the first one we're going to do is this first one right here, which is super easy. And we're going to look at that. And we are going to go, we are going to do the Mrs. Bad Crumble thing. First of all, we're going to look at this and we are going to say that is a negative times a negative, isn't it? So what's the answer going to be? Positive. Positive. Okay? So I can forget about these negative signs. They're out the window. I'm just going to do, because I know the answer is positive. So two-thirds times six-sevenths is the same as two times six over three times seven which is 12 over 21. Now here's where the thing breaks down. If you continue to multiply straight across and you get to 12 over 21, is that the best answer you can get? No, of course not, because that can be put into simpler terms, can't it? What would I do to 12 and 21 to make it simpler? Yeah, all teachers call it reducing, but it's not really reducing, because reducing means make it smaller, yeah? But it's going to be the same size. So simplifying it, putting it in simplest terms, what do you have to do? What do you have to do to change fractions but keep the value the same? Divide, divide or multiply. So this time we're going to divide because we want our numbers to get smaller so they're simpler. What can I divide 12 and 21 by? Three. Three. So if I divide that by three and I divide that by three, I get four over seven. And that's the best answer I can have. Is everybody cool with that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you can see that we were required to do one bit of computation, a second bit of computation, a third, and a fourth to get the whole answer. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Even though these numbers are pretty small, it took us four steps to get to the right answer, yeah? Okay. Most of your teachers will have shown you what I'm about to show you, hopefully. If they haven't, well, you'll see it for the first time now. I'm going to rewrite this over here. I'm going to rewrite it in green. Two-thirds times six-sevenths. Now, I'm going to look at this, and I'm going to say to myself, self... 3 and 6 are numbers that work together. Why? Why do 3 and 6 work together? Because 3 is half of 6. Three, yeah, 6 and 3 can multiply and work in partners. Can 2 and 7? No. No. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, 3 and 6 work together. If I take 
If I divide 3 by 3, what do I get? 1. If I divide 6 by 3, what do I get? 2. Now I have 2 times 2, which is what? 4. And 1 times 7, which is what? 7. And I get my answer done right away. Does everybody see that? Do you have to do what I did in green? Ever? No. No, you don't have to. In grade 9, it's no big deal. Because even over here, the numbers are still kind of small, aren't they? Right? But look what happens over here if we do the way you were taught in grade 4. What is 7 times 4? 28. 28. And what's 12 times 21? Can't even do it without your calculator. What is it? Go ahead and use your calculators. 252. And then that we'd have to simplify, yeah? That's a giant pain in the butt, isn't it? But watch what happens if you do the little trick I just showed you. Do 12 and 4 work together? Why? They divide into each other. What divides into 4 and 12? 3? 4. How many 4s fit into 4? 1. One. How many fours fit into 12? Three. Do seven and 21 work together? How many sevens go into seven? How many sevens go into 21? Three. Now I have one times one. What's that? One. And three times three. What's that? Nine. And I'm already in simplest form. Does everyone see how it works? This way is very helpful as you go further when the numbers get bigger. Okay? If you want, you are welcome to multiply straight across. But then you've got to simplify these giant numbers, which is a bit of a pain. Okay? Now, Aiden, you asked me if you need a common denominator. You do not, and this is why. What is 9 really? Now, how do we write it properly as a rational number? What would 9 really be over? 1. 1, right? Times 3, which would be really over 1, correct? Yeah. Now, you've got to think back to multiplying. What does this mean? This means I have 9, and you know 9 is too big, and I'm too lazy. 4. Cool? So this means I got 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, how many times? 4 times 3. How many 4s do I have? Four, one, two, three, four, times three. How many bars of four? I gotta write three of them, right? So how much do I have there? Four threes, which is twelve. Twelve. Twelve over one, right? Okay. So four times three is twelve. One times one times one is one. Twelve over one. We get rid of the bottoms. Yeah. Yep. Now, this is a rectangle, isn't it? It's 4 this way, and how far is it this way? 3. three. 4 times 3 gets me 12. Cool? Four. Now, the reason you don't need a common denominator is this. What if I have 1 half times 1? Well... There's one half, yes? Times one, there's only one of them, right? So the answer is one half. Cool? Now, if I do one half times two, what do I get? One half and then another one half, which gets me one, right? What's that really? One. What's one times two? Two times one? 2 divided by 2 is 1. Cool still? So, as you can see, you do not need a common denominator if it's a fraction times a whole number. Cool? Now, watch what happens if I do this. And that made a rectangle too, right? It was 1 half this way and 2 this way, right? Now, watch what happens if I do this. One half, agreed? 
Now I got to make a rectangle. So if this, if I make it a rectangle, this is one half. Yeah. Now I'm going to multiply one half times one half. Ready? So I've got my half. Now I need a half this way, don't I? Cool. This is my half here, right? Only that part is in both of them, right? Yep. How big is that? A quarter. A quarter, because it's half of the half. Got it? So when you draw it out, it makes perfect sense that a half times a half is a quarter, right? So then, math guys, you guys only see the results of hundreds and hundreds of years of math. Math guys, using pieces of brick, stone, whatever, figured out that if I take a half and I cut it in half, I get a fourth. That's how math was done way back in the day. It wasn't done with numbers. Numbers didn't even exist. So they figured out that this equaled one quarter. Whatever they called one quarter was the Egyptians that invented fractions. And then later math guys said, well, we don't need pictures. This makes sense. So one times one, one, two times two, four. And then the lovely thing about math, the ma thing that makes math the greatest thing to study in the world is the fact that if it works once in math, it works always. So if you understand this nice, simple example, one, one, two, two, one, four, with a picture, then you now understand every fraction, no matter what it looks like. Because it's always the same thing. But you asked me the question that a modern kid would ask, do I need a common denominator? If we were in school in Egypt 7,000 years ago, we're not, of course, then this would be not a problem. You wouldn't have even needed to ask because they would have done everything with pictures. Cool? Now, think back to why do we need a common denominator when we add? That's the uh, this thing, right? Where we draw, there's thirds, there's quarters. Once you put them together, you don't know exactly how full it is. So that's why we need a common denominator when we add. So you can't make a rectangle with it. Good? Yeah. Okay. So back to this. So here we go. Now, guys... I want to point out again something to you. This stuff here is the maximum amount of work you would need to do. You don't need to fill in all these blanks always if you know what you're doing. Cool? So let's look at this. And over here, this of course is thinking as well. So I look at this and I see, oh, 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 fractions have different signs. So what's the answer? Negative. So the answer is negative. So do I care about this negative sign? Yes. I do because it's what makes the answer negative. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to write my negative right there. Because I know the answer has to be negative. So I got 1 over 5 and 3 over 5. What's 1 times 3? 3 and 5 times 5, 25, and I'm done. Because I've already moved my negative down there because it had to be negative. Let's look at the next one. Ugh, negative signs. I hate negative signs. Fractions have the same sign, so the answer is what? Positive. Positive. So I don't need to care about the negative signs at all. So I'm going to look at that and I'm going to say to myself, self, 9, 11, 7, 12. Can I do Mrs. Bad Crumble's grade 4 thing? Can I go straight across? What do I get? What's 9 times 7? Yep, 63. And 11 times 12? Nope. 132. And that's a pain in the butt to simplify, isn't it? Can I use a little shortcut? Do 11 and 7 work together? You already used beans for that one. Do 11 and 7 work together? No. No? Do 9 and 12? Yes. Sir. With what number? Three. three. How many threes fit into 9? Three. three. How many threes fit into 12? Four. Four. Now I have 3 times 7. What's that? And 11 times 4. 
44. And all of a sudden, it's a lot easier to deal with. Is everybody cool? Now, please notice, I have had to check diagonally every time, right? Yeah. Okay. What if it looked like this? You'd try the trick, right? Because 9 times 5 is a big number, 12 times 2 is a big number, yeah? So try the trick. You'd go diagonally. Do 12 and 5 work together? Do 9 and 2 work together? If none of them work together diagonally, what should you check? Straight vertically. Do 9 and 12 work together there? Yeah. That becomes 3 fourths. Cool? So, 1. Check diagonally. 2. Check vertically. Go take your break.